Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. My name is Vinny, and I'm joined with today's guest, Fran. He's selling his Amazon FBA business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Welcome to the show, Fran. How are you doing today? Hi, Vinny. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking about your business. It's a a pretty interesting mix and it's quite unique. But just before we get into the heart of things, let me go over a brief summary of the listing. So today's business is an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business in the supplements niche and it was created in June 2013. The average monthly revenue for the business is $37,925 and it makes an average of $15,219 per month in that profit. The assets that are included in the sale are the Amazon Seller Central account with six SKUs, eight domains, including all of the site contents and files, a trademark, a variety of social media accounts, SOPs, and employee contracts. Just please be aware that inventory isn't normally included in the listing price and further details will be provided to active buyers. You can head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 49862. If you want to learn more about the business, you can start your due diligence by unlocking the listing first. All right, Fran, I mean, those are you know the details out of the way. Let's find out a bit more about you. Can you tell me about your background in online businesses and, and e-commerce? Sure. So my background is actually in medical science and business. So I studied a master in Sweden, which led me to pharmaceutical company for which I was driving their e-commerce division in Singapore. And so I did that for about five years. And that's where I learned about online businesses and paid advertising and uh, lead generation and also the medical and health side of things online. Yeah, awesome. So it sounds like you really learn a lot from your standard sort of, I guess you could say, day job. And a lot of those skills obviously transferred over and helped you really build your current business for sure. Yes. How did you come up with the idea, though, to start an Amazon FBA business in this niche in particular? The idea came to me when, at the time in 2013, uh, suffering a bit of a health issue. And so I was looking for supplements that would help me get over that problem. And I came across a supplement that was quite famous in Asia, but it wasn't as popular in the West. So I gave it a try. And I had really good results. I was really impressed. And I think at that time, I was ready to start something on my own. I had been working on the pharmaceutical company for a while now, and I was excited to build something on my own. And I think that supplement was, in a way, you could say the opening door to that opportunity I was looking for. And so I started the company in Singapore. And at the beginning, the sales were mostly local, but then it grew all over the world. And then eventually the U.S. became a big market. Yeah, Fran, that's a great story. You know, I think a lot of FBA owners or e-commerce owners, you know, a lot of them share similar origin stories in the sense that they started their business based on a product that they couldn't really find. You know, they needed it to help them with, you know, solve whatever problem they needed. So it sounds like you sort of came up with a solution to your own problem and found out that there was a definitely demand for it from wider market. Yes, that's exactly how it happened. Let me ask you, Fran, how does your business primarily make money? So the mix of channel is 60% of the profit is coming from Amazon and 40% of the profit comes from the online store. And within Amazon, 50%, and I'm talking about the total profit, 50% is organic and 10% is PPC. So that will make the 60%. And out of the remaining 40%, we have a mix of email lists. We have organic traffic. We have referral traffic, paid advertising as well from Facebook retargeting, from Google Ads. So we have a really good mix of channels that makes the profitability of the business. 
Thanks for that breakdown. That's definitely useful to know. So far, we've covered why you found the business and how you've managed to find a product market fit. And obviously, it's in demand. And, you know, from what you shared, the revenue channels are quite diversified. But, you know, a lot of our listeners will be wondering why you're selling the business right now instead of continuing to run it. Yeah, it's a great question. During the last 12 months, the revenues and the profits has been quite stable. I think I've taken the business as far as I could. And it just feels like it's time for someone to take over and take it to new heights. At the same time, I've been spending less time in the business because I've also started another business on software. So I find myself really spending a lot more time on the software business. And I just think it's a really good time for someone to take over my business. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it's basically a combination of lack of time as well as almost like you've taken the business as far as you can go. It's kind of reached its reached its end maybe of the journey for you in the moment and you'd like to pass it on to the right buyer. Let me ask you then, let's touch on your experience that you learned while you're building this business. What did you find really helped you build the business? I think one key of building the business has been to actually find the right people. So I think hiring is really important in any business and having a skill at hiring is really fundamental for the growth of the business. So at the beginning, I was doing a lot of the daily operations myself. And like any entrepreneur who starts a business, you know, and wants to be the, you know, the sole proprietor and and do everything in the business themselves, there's got to be a point where you need to start outsourcing. And I found that when I got better at outsourcing and hiring good people that were good at what they do it's when the business really started to grow and more and more yeah you know that's a really good point you raised because obviously i think a lot of people in this space anyway like you said start off whether bootstrapped or however as a one-man band you know and there's a lot of times where we have to put on a lot of hats and i guess it's a really valuable skill where if you can learn how to like say delegate and outsource it takes a lot of stuff off your plate and you know you might even be able to pass it on to people who are more expert than you are at certain you know functions and they'll be able to grow the business in different ways for sure yeah were there any tools or software that really helped you when you were building a business yeah i find i click up for business as being a really good tool, not only in the task management aspect of it, which is great with so many options to comment, to link tasks, to create dependencies and so on, but also in the document section, because we've created SOPs, we've put videos, walkthroughs, and so we've created this knowledge base about how the process of the business works. And so we can hire people and show them all this documentation. And even once I sell the business and the new buyer acquires it, they will acquire all this documentation as SOPs. And I think ClickUp has been really great to get all this organized. Okay, so ClickUp was a key tool. Got it. On the other side of the looking glass, what did you try that didn't work when you're trying to grow the business? There has been a few projects that I've done that really didn't work out as expected. There was an outreach program that I was trying to do and I hired someone for it. It didn't really give as many results as I thought. I also tried to translate the website into other languages and found out that was a lot of work and a lot of configuration. So at some point I also gave up on it. I didn't think it was really worth it. But overall, we've stuck to the basics and we've improved the core, you know, and the big view of things. It wasn't a big deal. Okay, that's good to hear. Let's shift over to the marketing side of things now. What do you currently do in terms of marketing for the business? Yeah, we have Google Ads. We also do Facebook Ads as well as Amazon Pay-Per-Click. And that's the paid traffic. We also do email newsletters to our current subscribers and our customer list, which is about, I think, 13,000 contacts right now. And yeah, those are the main marketing activities we do nowadays. Okay. I just want to touch on your earnings for a second. Does the business have a lot of new customers or do you get quite a number of repeat buyers as well? We have percentage of the revenue that comes from repeat buyers. If I'm not mistaken, the last 30 days, half of the customers on the website were returning. And on Amazon, we have also subscribe and save. 
and around 40% of the revenue is coming from there. So there is a good mix of recurring revenue and new customers coming in. All right, wonderful. So it sounds like there's a good healthy mix there of both new customers, but also like a loyal audience. So let me ask you about the type of work that you do to maintain the site. Could you describe on a like a day-to-day basis what your tasks are? Yes, my main task is to really make sure everything is on track. And for that, we've built some dashboards that we look at every week. So every Monday, I take a look at the numbers I discuss with my key employees, those numbers, making sure that everything is going on track, that the inventory levels are good, you know, the marketing KPIs where we expect them. And so it's just mostly high level decisions, whether we might or might not run a promotion or how we should call it. I mean, mostly just helping with the brainstorm with my two key employees but I'm not involved in the operations, you know, designing of these marketing campaigns or contacting suppliers anymore. So they basically take care of everything and just make sure that the numbers are on track. Gotcha. Can you just share briefly what your two key employees, how they manage the business? Sure. So we have customer care slash logistics person. She is located in the Philippines and she's done a wonderful job for the past year. And then I have another guy who is in charge of marketing, and he's also been really great on, on driving all the marketing operations, and he's been really overseeing the whole marketing by himself. And yeah, that's really about it. Great stuff. Let me ask you, Fran, if you did stick with the business, what are some of the growth opportunities? What are some ways that you would try to expand the business? Yes, I think there are two opportunities that I could do if I were to stay in the business. The first would be to expand to Amazon Europe. I've actually just been contacted by an Amazon representative because they're offering a new program where they will help you actually start selling in Europe and they can do a VAT registration for you. And that seems like a great avenue there because I know Amazon Europe is really growing and it's a very good opportunity. And then other would be actually launch other products. I have in mind one product that I've been developing for a few months, a custom formulation, and it really overlaps really well with the demographics of our current customers. And the only reason why I haven't really started production yet is because there were some delays on the formulation. And it, the date when we actually receive everything is ready to place a order is was a bit too soon to when we listed the business. So I will leave that decision to the new owner. But just so they know, there is this opportunity to take over this project and launch this product. Cool. Definitely sounds like there's lots of different opportunities there. But I just want to ask you, because I mean, you know, all businesses have you know inherent risk involved right so what would you say are some of the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of well i think one risk is definitely it comes from the from just being on amazon as they control the marketplace they could you know have some requirements on your listing especially when it comes to health products so there's a risk there and there could be also you know in terms of advertising you got to be compliant with the advertising for health products and I think that could be another risk. Yeah, really good answers. Just the last few wrap-up questions here as we're reaching the end of our interview. How much support are you offering buyers? Is it the standard 30 days of email support? I'm actually willing to give 90 days. I know when someone takes over a business like this, they might be you know, uncertain about how to run it and what to do. I don't want to limit my time for the person who's going to take over. I'm willing to do 90 days, help everything and any way I can. So there will be a smooth transition and uh, they will be confident that, you know, I'll be there also to help them get through. That's great to hear. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yes, of course. Fantastic. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Sure, yes. I think I'll be willing to do 80% up from 20% earnout. We can discuss with potential buyers. Cool. Glad to hear you're open for negotiations around that. Last question really for you here, Fran. I mean, if you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why would you say that this is a business that's worth buying? Well, I think there is a good mix of channel distribution. 
sales coming from the website and sales coming from Amazon. And I think there is also a good mix of recurring revenue from returning customers as well as new customers. So the buyer will be acquiring a very stable business. It's been running also for seven years. And so they've got this stability and they can add new products and they can expand into Europe, like we talk about, and really make it grow. Great to hear. Is there anything else that you'd like to share that you think I might have missed during the interview? No, I think everything is perfect. Fantastic. Fran, it's been a pleasure having you on today. It's been a great pleasure being here, Vinny. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, you can head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 49862. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked it, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.